Everybody is running from something. Weakness, the past, reality. Not even a San Devastan can outpace your fears. Every character in Edge Runners, every character who tried to run, met their demise and their very efforts to escape. Lucy is no exception to this, despite her ultimate survival at the end of the show. Because in the end, as hard as Lucy fought, as much as she was willing to sacrifice, her greatest fear inevitably came true, due in no small part to her own actions. Lucy was recruited by Arasaka Corp at a young age, along with a slew of other children. She and her peers were chosen by the company due to their high aptitude scores for net running. They were told grandiose tales of how they would someday serve the world's most powerful mega corporation. To a bunch of kids who likely came from nothing, this would have put stars in their eyes. They pulled through their training on this sentiment alone until they were shuttered underground, forced to scour the old net in order to achieve Arasaka's dream of power and wealth. One by one, these kids were picked off, overworked, and tasked beyond reason. After a final escape, only Lucy managed to survive. She ran and kept running until she found herself in Night City, the perfect place to get lost in a sea of misfortunate faces. Lucy carries with her an almost anonymous quality, despite her iconic look able to fade into the background, for all but David, that is. Lucy, after all these years in captivity and servitude, is finally able to dream her own dream, to go to the moon. Lucy begins as a jaded, traumatized character. Lucy has seen enough betrayal and cruelty that she does not warm up to David right away. The relationship begins entirely to accomplish her own ends. Lucy quickly realizes that David is genuine. He's a benevolent goober, which is a weird thing to encounter in a city full of liars and cheats. For Lucy to encounter someone as innocent and hard on his sleeve as David, this appeals to the person that she hides inside of herself. Someone who wants to grow beyond the shackles of her past. A fun-loving girl who just wants to be free. I think what really draws Lucy to David is when he actually talks about the pressure of taking on his mom's dream for himself. Lucy understands him completely, albeit on a more extreme level, as someone who grew up in the mental and physical prison of Arasaka, as someone who was brainwashed to achieve the dreams of a company that did not care how much it harmed her. David, at this point, is where Lucy was in her childhood burdened by a terrible self-image imposed upon them by the powers that be, full of the idea that you are only as good as what you can offer other people. That is the Night City machine. Only Lucy has been trying to rebel harder and harder since she escaped her terrible childhood. By the time Lucy meets David, she is exhausted and worn out by the life of an edge runner. She knows she can't ever get out of Night City in a legit way. Lucy has to take on the clandestine work of a merc because otherwise it could leave an easier trail for Arasaka to track her down. But this has taxed her to the point that she almost seems to have her own doubts about her dream of escaping, of reaching the moon. Lucy has her own poor self-image, her own trauma that weighs her down. When Lucy shares her brain dance of the moon with David, her dream, this is when her idea for herself begins to evolve, and I believe this is the only time we ever get to see Lucy truly be herself. Lucy is being the free, genuine person. She she hides beneath the harsher, more broody exterior that she wears as armor against life in Night City. She's comfortable 
she's happy and she's laughing. We never see Lucy this happy than when she's on the moon with David. I believe that everything we see in this scene with her and David is genuine, despite the circumstances. You could certainly say that she is still motivated by keeping him distracted for Maine, but she clearly trusted David enough to show him a dream that Maine himself is shocked by when David tells him about it. This is when Lucy, unlike so many other characters in Edge Runners, begins to understand what is actually valuable, what her dream actually means, and what makes life worth living. And this is also when her greatest fear sows its seeds. Lucy is conflicted by David's becoming an edge runner. She sees in David a kind, genuine, innocent guy. She doesn't want to see him get chewed up by the cyberpunk life, as it's already taken a toll on her. She clearly regrets leading him on in the way she did, because she genuinely got a taste of a happiness that she's never really had before. David lights something in her, in the same way that she lights up something within him. She resists working with him and getting to know him because for her, the idea of letting somebody in is terrifying. It was easier for her to do that before, under the guise of having to manipulate David. It was nothing to be this happy-go-lucky girl to keep him distracted. But now that the lie is not shielding Lucy from the reality of taking that plunge, in opening herself up truly, she acts indifferent and disinterested in David. And by this point, Lucy is already scared of David's loss. And so she tries to make it a little easier for herself in doing what she can to not get to know him, to make the pain less. After David saves her, nearly getting killed in the process, she cannot ignore the goodness in him that most other cyberpunks lack. She admits to David that while he's a great edge runner, that the life of an edge runner tends to end in premature, horrific death. When David tries to peel apart her reasoning for wanting him to stop trying to live this life, when he tries to figure out why she is the way she is, she seizes the back of her head, where her deep dive port is hidden. She does not tell David about her past, but there are hints that this trauma is what holds her back throughout the series. Instead, when David promises her that he will take her to the moon someday, she kisses him. David promises her he won't die on her, a promise he inevitably breaks, and we see them kissing on the moon. Because at this point, Lucy has realized that David and whatever life she can lead with him is her dream. Going to the moon is only worth it if David is with her. And note that we never see Lucy as happy as she was with him on the moon in that simulator. Because from this point onward, Lucy begins to be consumed by her new and greatest fear losing the guy she loves. Lucy is regularly sexually harassed by Pilar, and it sucks that nobody ever really sticks up for her. Maine never tries to shut it down. Kiwi is the only other person who really kinda calls him out on how gross he is, but that's just one line in her first scene. And I also think Pilar is more bold with how gross he is with Lucy because she's younger. Part of me wonders if her initial passivity over this harassment was her very low opinion about herself, her life, and her prospects before David showed up. In her dream changing after that one truly positive experience with a good person, I think Lucy wakes up to realize that she is not worthless and she does not have to take this gross treatment. Lucy can hold her own and it's extremely satisfying when she finally fries the guy. <laughs> And clearly there was no even remotely positive feelings towards Pilar after his death because that is when her and David get together. <laughs> this is definitely more of a speculation 
point, I just wanted to make it, uh, but I think it's a really good point in just how the kindness of one person can really help to change how someone feels about themselves. Never underestimate the value of basic human kindness. Mm. I honestly just think this is more proof of David's kindness and care towards her lighting up a positive fire inside of Lucy that she did not have before. Lucy does become almost ruthless after she gets with David. When David gets kidnapped by Kurosaki, we see a violent, aggressive, absolutely ride or die side with her. And it's great, but it is a hint towards the levels that she is willing to go to protect the guy she loves. The idea of losing David is a horrific thing for her. It would be the worst kind of trauma for her after David has helped to lift her up from that dark place that she has been living for so long. She would do anything to protect him from harm. Anything. So much so that it does inevitably cloud her judgment. Kiwi is the one who found Lucy in Night City and introduced her to Maine's crew. Kiwi may have been one of the first people Lucy actually sort of opened up to, albeit not much, post running away from Arasaka. Both of them are netrunners, and we can assume Kiwi's seen her fair share of horrible things in her assumably long career as a solo. When Lucy goes to confide and question Kiwi about how David is doing, Kiwi does speak to Lucy in a way that we don't see her ever speak to another character in. Kiwi, down to her haircut, I believe, is a mirror for Lucy. Both netrunners, both mysterious, and both broody. Almost like how Maine is a mirror for David. If David had never come into Lucy's life, she may very well have ended up just like Kiwi. To an extent, she already is a lot like her. But even if Kiwi and Lucy have a closer friendship than most other characters in the show, that does not mean that Kiwi would not throw the people that she is friends with under the bus. Kiwi tried to warn Lucy about not just everyone else, but herself when she said to never trust anyone in Night City. Her betrayal of Lucy still stings despite this warning. But even if Lucy did not heed this particular lesson of Kiwi's, she does mirror other qualities of Kiwi's. Her ruthlessness, her cleverness, her overconfidence, and as would later eat away at Lucy, her capacity for betrayal. When Lucy is asked to break Arasaka's ice, she is essentially being asked to revisit the horrors that she has spent so many years running away from. She leans heavily on David in this situation, absolutely terrified of being dragged into that childhood hell she will never forget. She needs David to tell her she can do this, because David, as the only person who puts her own feelings ahead of money, is the only person whose opinion she would put above her own. When David tells her that he believes in her, she feels ready to revisit her pain, perhaps to even confront it and try to put it behind her. Inside Tanaka's mind, she finds out that David is of special interest to Arasaka. The potential for his capture and use as a test subject is too much for Lucy to risk. So she tries to kill Tanaka from the inside out. This is what causes Trauma Team and Max Tack and the NCPD to pinpoint their location. Lucy's actions indirectly lead to the deaths of Dorio and May. But Lucy pulled that trigger to protect David. She was so terrified of what could happen to him that she made a snap decision. We can see that this weighs upon her. Even in the car as she awaits David's return, her feelings are compounded even further when he runs away to try and save Maine and Dorio. And as we see a whole year later, Lucy has not told David about her role in this, because doing so would require telling David about Arasaka's interest in him. And as we all know, David's hubris at this point 
is at an all-time high. And I also believe that Lucy's reasoning for hiding the truth of what she is doing from David goes beyond just simple guilt about Maine and Dorio. I think for Lucy, the fact that David has a history of not exactly listening to her and putting himself in ridiculously dangerous situations based on his belief that he is special is what keeps her silent. If David was to find out that Arasaka believes that he is special, who's to say that this wouldn't just fuel David's ego more? The last thing Lucy wants is to see him killed or losing himself in this quest for power against the helplessness he felt as a kid. I cover this fact more in my David video. It just makes total sense that she would be quiet because based on what she has experienced with David so far, it is reasonable to assume that he would do something he would regret, that he would do something reckless if he found out the truth. Lucy did this deep dive with a new kind of strength, fueled by the idea that she was strong enough to face her past, but in doing so, she discovered a new fear from the people whose dreams she was once forced to make come true, a very real threat against the dreams she now holds. When we finally see Lucy a year after Maine and Dorio's death, there is something reminiscent of her first meeting with David. She's almost kind of playing David once again with the way she's acting, only this time to hide what she has been working on since that day in Tanaka's brain. Not only that, but to almost lie to herself, to help allow herself some happy moments with the guy she is fighting so hard to protect. The only thing that Lucy reveals to David in this period is the truth of her own past. And again, Lucy expresses her deep fear of losing David. But because both she and David fail to communicate their fears and desires more clearly, they never quite meet in the middle. David still expresses a desire to take Lucy to the moon, not quite realizing, no matter how many times Lucy tries to tell him, that her dream is a life with him. Lucy still goes behind David's back, killing Netrunners who would otherwise unbury the information that she tried to hide concerning David. But in doing so, she draws more attention to herself, to David, so much so that Faraday and Kiwi are all the more easily able to find her and neutralize her. Lucy's fear made her act rash, and in the end, brought the end she was hoping to avoid. And while I do totally think David is the one at fault primarily for what happened to him, and it is just so ironic that in Lucy's quest to try and prevent this fate from befalling him, she almost fast forwarded things to where they likely would have ended up anyway, and that is so terribly sad to think about how she carries that guilt at the end of the series. In the end, David does save Lucy from Arasaka, but her whole world is destroyed in exchange for her life. David, just barely holding on to his sanity, traded his life to use the cyber skeleton so he could have a chance to save her. And while he succeeds, both he and Lucy know that their time is limited. Lucy's worst fear is unfolding before her eyes. They share one last kiss in the sky, floating before the moon, a callback to Lucy's greatest dream, that if she was to go anywhere, the moon included, let it be with David. David's dying wish and dying dream is that Lucy makes it to the moon, and he makes her promise him this, once again misunderstanding Lucy's actual dream and instead imposing his on her in this really terrible moment for the both. But David knows he's going to die at this point, so only Lucy's going to be around to really deal with this pain and alone. I know David doesn't realize it, but his final wish for her is quite damaging. After David's death and Lucy's escape, she does make good on her promise, and she does make it to the moon, only to see those old memories of the David she fell in love with, 
Days before the whole mess with Arasaka. Days when things were new. Days that helped to pick her up from her own terrible past and show her a ray of hope for the future. In a roundabout way, Lucy was the only one who ever really figured out what really did matter in life, and she was forced to watch the people around her, the people she cared about, never understand that same truth. Not to get corny, but when it comes to rainbows like Lucy's color palette, they depend on how light hits water to truly shine, to be beautiful and to be seen by the human eye. If Lucy was the mist, then David was the light. Without him there with her at the end, there is this feeling of emptiness, of despair. And while I like to think that Lucy would continue on and find a way to be happy eventually, she will not forget David and the trauma of losing him the way that she did. She would carry him like the memory of joy and happiness, the first in her life that he brought her. This one hurt a lot, guys. I had to rewatch Edge Runners for this just to be sure. I knew that Lucy was going to be the most complex analysis I did, which is why I saved her for the end. <laughs> Ugh. Like, she's the main character of Edge Runners, in my opinion. Ugh, but it just hurts. Doesn't get easier. It gets worse every time you watch this show, how you feel after. It's so good! It's so well done. Thank you all very much for watching, guys, if you've made it this far. I really appreciate it. The writer in me had a lot of fun with this. I had a great time slicing Lucy's story apart because as a writer, this helps me to better understand the kind of stories that I want to create. If you are interested in checking out my novel, which is kind of like a post-apocalyptic novelized manga, I will put a link in the description for you. Next week, I will be doing my overall analysis of Edge Runners. I don't want to say that I'm done with character analysis for the show. Uh, I would like to maybe revisit Dorio at some point. I think she's more important than she seems, but we shall see. Because I have also recently finished watching Evangelion for the first time, and I have a lot of thinking to do about that, and I do want to make some videos on Evangelion. I'm aiming to be finished digesting it properly, and then I would like to start things up with a ray analysis. We will see. Thank you very much for watching this, guys. It is much appreciated. I hope that you have a wonderful day and a fantastic week. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.